right, welcome everyone to the 7.30 class and uh, this is a class where we show famous player games, some really nice games. So this is a game uh, between Vladimir Bagirov and against Eduard Gufeld and it's a King's Indian game and uh, if you don't know about Gufeld, he, he loved his King's Indians and the dragon with the bishop on g7 position so he really believed in these positions and he always played it. And he played against some of the best players in the world. This is a USSR championship game. So uh, played in 1973. So by a slight unusual move order, we basically get a King's Indian defense. F3 setup. What is this setup called here? Siemish setup, okay? Semish setup. So this gives white a very strong center but it does create a little bit of weaknesses on the dark squares here okay so but it, uh, in return it gets a very strong control of the center and normally white wants to go bishop e3 queen d2 long castle and just attack so i castle bishop e3 knight to c6 one of the many options here, by the way, the Kasparov, Gary Kasparov played these positions many times. He has a very good game against Anatoly Karpov that he won. I think it was with e5. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, th these are tricky positions to play. You may think, oh, I just put the center and it's going to be easy to play. But no, it's very complex and, and this game is going to be no difference. So it's just a very complicated game. Uh, it's, it's hard to play these positions. So if you're trying to figure out what to do against king's indian samish is is a very good probably it's, it's a good setup but it's, it's it's very complicated to play i've tried playing a couple of times and it's it's there's so many things black can do so knight c6 is one of them it's now black is considering the move e5 and putting the knight on d4 even so knight g2 is that's why i played because now if you play e5 you normally don't want to allow black to come in here and here you can just take twice but let's say you play this move right you might be wondering why am i saying that but now i go here you take right take take you may think oh i'm up a pawn i run into a big problem now 94 hitting your queen takes rook e8 and then you lose your queen so in general, like even if I didn't have this, right, I probably have a good compensation here just because of that bishop. Just even if I play something like knight h5, hitting the queen, queen returns here, something like f5. This is a good enough compensation to play, okay? So that's why uh, we see a move knight g2. I actually grew up, when I grew up and I was just starting out, I actually played the semish and always liked it, but... Uh, later on in my career, after I became a grandmaster and used to play it, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty challenging. So rook b8 now played. Queen d2. Protecting it. a6. Ideal of course of rook b8 a6 is try to get a contra play with b5 and now bishop page six white says you know i'm going to allow it to play b5 i'm going to concentrate on the attack which is a typical thing they do here they try to play after they exchange the bishops they try to go for h4 h5 ideas and try to get a, a pressure b5 played h4 e5 black is trying to get a counterplay so again if you analyze this game which was played in 1973 with a modern computer of course you might find that white was doing really well at some point okay but that's not the, really the point the point is to understand how the ideas work and if you want to play this as black you will see what Gufel did in this game and also you know up for white what did grandmaster bagirov do okay Again, there is not really a big point in analyzing the, the very old games with the modern computers because, yeah, you're going to find a lot of, even a lot of the masterpieces, you know, you're going to just refute them 
because you know but back then there were no engines so level of defense was different so now take take h5 idea is to play you know open up the position at some point maybe even to play h6 and if you take he wants to play the typical move g4 force you back check and i mean this is very dangerous i mean this is very very dangerous things could happen now after g5 so g5 or it, actually this probably just wins okay we have to be very careful so king h8 king h8 and he wants to if white captured he wants to take fg and he wants to you know that he doesn't want to allow white to play queen h6 i mean by looking at the position it feels like white should be much better here because if you have to make a move like king h8 it looks very very dangerous so but anyway 95 played trying to exchange the knights takes opening up the h file and queen h6 now the idea is knight takes f6 and queen h7 mate that is the idea knight takes f6 queen h7 mate it goes knight h5 blocking the h file because the threat was already very strong knight takes f6 with the idea queen h7 mate so he just tries to block it white goes g4 just trying to move this knight away and just just trying to checkmate very straightforward plan rook takes b2 he is ignoring the fact the knight is hanging so capturing rook takes b2 now the rook is very active but you down a piece now g5 this is now a positional move that locks in the position and also it shuts down the queen so this is a very good point he had when he played the move g5 without this move i think it's a big big trouble and now things are hanging things are very loose here f3 d4 king is in the middle white has a couple of pawns if we do a pawn count one two three four five versus seven so there's two pawns already that block has rook is now active on f3 uh, f file rook on b2 so it's very interesting very interesting position i think good compensation now rook g1 very direct approach in this game by grandmaster bagirov rook g1 now he is threatening to take the pawn on g5 and continue with his threat of just try to mate queen g7 now what do you think black should do here g4 of course pushing the pawn that prevents rook g5 and he wants to keep the g file closed not to mention the possibility of the queen coming into h4 as well very strong idea g4 long castle look at that king is exposed but he runs away with this idea and attacking the rook always remember eh? don't forget this idea because why can always do this long castle and attack the rook rook a2 and now knight f4 yes sacrificing the knight blocking the f file trying to get the pawn on c4 
before knight takes f4 now he's hoping that you know he will have knight g6 i mean the white king looks extremely weak here but still there is a threat out there that you have to deal with very strong threat knight g6 but by now it feels pretty clear that white is doing uh, you know white is in pretty big trouble here the knight is causing problem in that case what you should do to get rid of the problem eliminate it right takes that problem is gone and now c3 now he wants to play knight before and simply mate and white doesn't have enough time knight c4 and mate is coming bishop c4 activating the bishop and putting pressure on the rook Rook a3. Still with the idea of knight before and just mate. Takes knight before. Material advantages on the white side, but the threat is very powerful. Simply a mate. Pawn on c3 is doing a good job covering up the dark squares, and knight on b4 is covering the c2 square, and threat is very powerful. Just to mate. Well, not much to do, right? The only way to stop it is to go here. And now, here, of course, you have c2, king b2. You take, I think, but it's, this rook is hanging. And the attack is kind of stalled here, and there's still some weaknesses around the king, so it's not so clear. So here, Gufeld comes up with a very interesting idea. To sacrifice his bishop, but to get his queen into the game. So of course Bagirov takes, what else to do? And now... Queen b8, queen f6, you get made it. So you don't have time to do this because you actually unfortunately get checkmated first. So you can get that in, but it has to be done with the check. Knight d3, perfect, yes. Because now if he takes, you have a queen b8 check. If he takes, check, check, and mate. Okay? If he goes king c2, then we can do it. Check, check, and mate. Okay? So this bishop e6, knight d3 is a very strong idea. Queen f7, only move. Queen f7, only move, trying to stay in the game, basically. That is the only idea. Try to stay in the game. Now, this is where you have to find a mate. Otherwise, <coughs> you will lose. Queen b8, correct. Bishop b3. Well, if I go king b2, I think you will win with check. Check. If I go back, check. And mate. All right? So he goes here now. Rook takes bishop. And now, if you go rook b2, he does king takes d3. And he is stopping everything. Okay? So we go check this way. 
So he took, if he goes back, then I think we can just use this idea, right? Check, check. We're not losing the knight here, the good news is. And something like this. Pick up that queen, win the game. And if he goes here now, knight before check. If he moves away, you take. Check, mate. So he has to, he has to take. So he did. Now, Knight d3, then he does king c3, actually. He doesn't want to lose the c-pawn. Knight a2? Maybe. Better. Knight a2, I have some escape squares on e3, you know? Of course, knight d5. Now, if he goes here, let's just try to understand. Here, mate. Here, mate here queen b4 check queen b2 mate so it has to go here now now this e3 is taken e2 this is all taken Just look, just look. Look at the whole board, okay? Don't be stuck on one area. Look at the whole board. He keeps trying to go to D3. You don't want him to go to D3. It's hard to mate him there. Try to see if you can push him to go to B3, let's say. Perfect. Now, if he goes to B1, you go Queen B2 mate. So he has to go here. Queen b2 check. He goes here, it's mate. If he goes here now, what do you do? Mate. Perfect. Got it? That is the very famous game, Bagirov Gufeld. Let's go back, and this is a tough game to understand. So we're going to go back and go very slowly. And I want you to find all the moves, okay, by block. Go. 33 moves total. G6. G6. Remember, unusual move order. C4. Now, perfect. So we have a semish system, right? Semish system. Many different ways to play here. You can play c5, you can play e5. You have many different things you can do here. But what's the, what's the idea that he did here? Knight c6. Now. Rook B8 first, Claudio, remember, to play A6 and B5. Queen D2. The point of Rook a B8 is to play A6 and then look for that possibility with B5. So how are we going to do it? Perfect. Now, what do you do? B5, threatening B4. H4. Mm -hmm. 
he went for the break on the center okay h5 again if you take knight h5 g4 is very annoying so here where he played a tough move you know unusual looking move here yes i'm pretty sure it probably white is better here but he has to play very very precisely maybe c takes b6 or something it feels like at least my intuition tells me that this should be better for white you know but again it's it's very hard you know because you know black player it just has lots of experience experience counts in this position so he plays knight d5 now takes takes and white probably thought he's gonna have this nice and easy win here you know with the straightforward attack but another very tough move to find who would have played this move in a real tournament game guys you think you would play this move because it looks bad g4 is coming you know it looks really bad really difficult now perfect rook takes b2 pawn takes knight g5 rook g1 trying to win the pawn on g5 or even queen g5 and now we toss the pawn he, if he takes queen h4 is very dangerous you know he might not survive this you know probably get made it so he goes long castle uh, rook takes h2. rook takes a2 knight f4 very dangerous to open up the f file so he gives the knight no pawn takes first knight takes and now the threat is knight g6 so what did he play rook takes f4 another sacrifice he sacrificed the piece then now he sacrificed the rook and he's gonna go on and on until the end of the game he takes now you want to try to put that mating net right and plus he's threatening bishop takes here c3 takes All the squares are taken and rook a1 mate is coming to get the mate okay king b1 perfect double exclamation mark okay perfect now continue not queen fb8 because you get mated another sac sacrifice if he takes he just gets mated with queen b8 queen b2 so he goes here try to make it more difficult now check if king c2 that runs into queen b2 so he has to go here takes check if king c1 we just do it this way okay king c2 
king e2, king e3, queen e2, wins the queen, queen c4, knight b4, takes, check, check, And if it goes, yeah, so you have to look at this idea, check. Actually, he resigned after this, so, but this is a very important move, queen e2. If he goes back to c1, then we have queen b2 mate. And if king b3, queen b2. So again, very famous game of uh, 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 Bagirov versus Gufeld, okay? So this is from 1973. Very, very important game in a king's Indian same ish okay so um there are other openings that you can play of course as white here you know you don't have to play f3 f3 gives white a big center and possibilities to attack but it's very back and forth it's a back and forth game okay as you can see in this one it was a race and it came down to who was faster and it happened to be the black was faster in this particular uh, position okay all right now I want to bring uh, one example to you from my game okay and it's it's about an end game I had so this was played in a pro chess league uh, basically we played this on uh, yesterday so I'm playing with the white pieces uh, I'm white against international master Patel. And, okay, he played bishop d4. And so it's black to move. So let's put this bishop here. So let's discuss this endgame a little bit, okay, to try to understand. First of all, I want to give you a couple of minutes to think so you can give me a definite, uh, uh, definite evaluation. So definite evaluation of this position. Like, is it winning or is it? Material, yes, but I if, if we always go by material in end games, it's not so easy, right? Because it's not always. So, so first, give it a little thought, okay? Think a little bit, and then you can tell me what do you think. Is this a definite win or this is maybe not a definite win? Should be winning, okay. <laughs> Most people think it's winning. All right. Question is now, how about a plan, right? What would be the plan to win this? Yes, that's a good plan. Um, you have to be a little bit careful his king not getting to here, you know, because if you just put the pawns h3, f3, then g2 is weak, and if he gets in with the king, if it if again if we trade the pawns it's going to be a draw bishop versus knight so I'll, I'll tell you what happened in our game so i did this he did this it's a win but it's not an easy one okay so you went here i went here he went here okay i got to this position sort of And and the problem I was having here, again, this was a 15-minute game. And uh, in a real game, like in a real tournament game, I probably can think and maybe play g4 without worrying about anything and probably win this. So let's think here. I want to give you a little bit of time to think because I don't think, uh, you know, if you just move the king you'll be able to win because this will be met by king f5, which happened in a game. I, I, I won the game, but I want you to think a little bit and see what would be the simplest way to win this position. Which moves are important to play here to achieve the winning position? Do you want to allow him to play g4, h4, 
you don't want to allow this so it's like you have to balance this yeah b5 yes so maybe it goes somewhere here mm. no, just try to think h4 maybe he even takes and then you have to worry about getting this back in original position what can we do here huh well, the main idea here what can we do mm -hmm. g4 right so of course you're always worried about the exchange of the pawns and now let's say he sits right the rook is doing a great job here cutting the king you know so that's good now which piece you think you can improve a little bit more to the maximum of it perfect now he goes here by the way he cannot play the move f5 because rook b6 check Okay. If I, so he has to go here now. Perfect. Now f5, you're just going to take. So he waits. Pay attention. You don't want to give up the pawn. He sits. And now, what is your breakthrough method here? All right. This, I like this idea. That's good. Now. Because the bishop now moves away, and now what is the idea here? To get his rook, you want to get your rook in uh, and move him him away from the pawn. There you go, perfect. Yes. Now you want to go rook g8 check. If he sits, check, and you get in here. Check, take the pawns. Okay, so he can do that, and if he doesn't want you to do that, he has to go here, and now we play king f5, covering that square, he sits, don't blunder the rook, remember, check, if he goes here now, beautiful, takes, takes, you win this okay and if he goes to the back rank what do you do g6 if he goes here you have the mate oops again don't blunder the rook so stay with the plan right and you take so that's the winning method okay so basically that's what you need to do here before opponent can play h4 even you know you fix the position with this move okay g4 is the right idea to fix because here king f5 i end up winning with a different method you know i i again it was much longer journey you know but i end up winning it anyway i brought my king to f7 so but again it was just a much much longer idea which you don't need to worry about you just 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 play the move g4 fix the structure so his king is in the box the pawn on g4 he keeps the king in the box from where he cannot escape from okay and then you will win by using the and if h4 same idea deflect if he stays on this diagonal you can just go here or actually just start with this and get the king to only six sits I get behind it threatening check king f7 if he goes here now king f5 
he goes here again you will go rook f7 and take if he goes here threatening mate thank you very much got it okay very good now at the end we will do a couple of uh, important studies for you okay now another tough position here we have the reason I say tough because here you have to find a difficult ideas to win because there are no pawns on the board that means if the Queens come off the board it's an immediate draw so here you have to find the right sequence of moves to set up the ideal position and then go for the the right idea to win quite a tough one here quite a tough one white to play and win but the good news is knight and queen they work together very well to set up mating nets and mating mechanisms okay mating nets and mechanisms so it has so it we check we get the same position right and now now he's threatening to check on g6 So the same idea you get to the right position and now f you need to find a square to hide the king king d2 and you pass the turn to him now let's look at his options king cannot move he cannot go here you take he cannot go here here you take here you take here you take here you mate okay here you mate here you mate so if he goes here now he occupies the only square his king can go to and then you go queen g8 so let's go back and do this one more time slowly go ahead okay continue check again he goes here because if he goes here he gets made it via check mate and mate so he goes here now what do you do check 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 mate and if he king has no scores any other place he goes you have a mate okay so the quiet move idea is very important when you're trying to do studies always look to to get a position to improve and then a quiet move the suksavang idea works in many many positions in real games as well too you have to look at this ideas so you can see all right very good so we studied the game by Girov Grunfeld I recommend you look at this game one more time at home you can find this game by just googling it from 1973 and go as slow as you like and we did some good studies so thank you everyone for coming for the classes and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.